We give all praise and worship unto God. So we have worshipped God wonderfully. So I want to believe that all worship protocols are observed. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Before we say anything at all, we want to thank God for this awesome couple. Uh, Pastor Mekus, I call him Pastor Mekus. And Sister Shady. Shady Lady. Hallelujah. Now, I don't know why. Every time Pastor Mekus calls me, I just start laughing. Before I even pick the call. I don't know why. He's very infectious with laughter. Praise God. All right, we are here for you um, to kind of uh, get into us and of course we'll get into the word of God and know what God advises us. But the only person that will be preaching is my wife. So I'm going to hand over the microphone to her to say something from the scriptures so that she wets the floor. Hallelujah. Amen. It's my honor to invite my sugar. My honeysuckle of 35 years. The one who has made my head to spin and continues to spin. Amen. The sweetest. Abimbola. Thank you, sweetie. That is my honeysuckle and sweetie pie. Hallelujah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Pastor Emeka, Sister Shady. God bless you for the opportunity. Um, like you said, we're going to do a little bit of um, scriptures. And um, since it's a Christian gathering, I won't want to, you know, do the experience one first, okay? So what do we understand by marriage? Before we start that, too, we are going to look at the scripture that they gave us to follow. And it is in Ecclesiastes chapter 4, from 9 to 12. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Amen. Is somebody with me? Hallelujah. So I'll read it. Ecclesiastes 4, 9 to 12. Two are better than one because they have a good reward for their labor. For if they fall, the one will lift up his fellow. But woe to him that is alone when he falleth. For he hath not another to help him up. Again, if two lie together, then they have heat. But how can one be warm alone? That's a good question. And if one prevail against him, two shall withstand him. And a threefold cord is not easily broken. So we know, maybe younger people may not, that marriage is God's idea. Marriage is God's idea. It's not your pastor's idea. It's not your parents' idea. It is God's idea. Marriage is between a man and a woman. You know, because of civilization and things, they are bringing things that are against what the originator of marriage put together concerning marriage. It's supposed to be between a man and a woman. It's not between a man and a man. It's not between a woman and a woman. And it's not between a man and two women or a woman and three men. Do, do you understand? So we must get the foundation of marriage, the way the owner the one who instituted it wants us to do it. It's also a mutual fellowship. It is when you want to wed, when you want to marry. You know, the pastor will say marriage is for mutual fellowship, is to curb the sin of adultery, is for procreation, you know. And then it is also to raise godly seed. Amen. Later on, read Malachi 2, 15. He says, Malachi 2, 15. When you keep with your one wife and your one husband, you are able to raise godly seeds. Hallelujah. 
So let's go to the scripture. Verse 9 says, why? It says, you know, two are better than one. That is our, our theme for today. So why are two better than one? Ask your neighbor, why? Why? Uh -uh. Why are two better than one? At least if I'm on my own, I can do what I like. I can have my me time. You know? But when you now put the second one, what happens? But God is the one that said, you know, he created the heavens and the earth. Then he looked. He said one thing. He said, it is not good for a man to be alone. So that is where we got two are better than one from. So when we are talking about two, it is still God's idea. Hallelujah. There are many advantages when to cooperate. Amen. The first one it says you have a good reward for your labor. Amen. In which areas? We are raising children. It's Children's Day tomorrow. When the man is busy with office and you are the one looking out for the children, the minute you say, when your daddy comes, you will see, they start begging you. You know, I, I stopped working, is it a year or two after we got married? And I've not been working till today. God has been sustaining me through my own circle. Amen. But not many people can undo that. If you are going to do this thing the way God wants, you must not be a selfish partner. In some nations, it is the woman that works, and the man is the one that is keeping the home front. Amen. So, when you are raising children, you cannot do it on your own. Go and ask those who have separated. The children will carry their head and not together. When they are separated, talk less or when they are together. So, you must stay together so that your labor over those children will not be in vain. Amen. Even in finances, the man has been toiling, he's been working, he's been laboring. And then it does, his, his salary is not covering rent. If he has a wife that is sens sensitive, what do you think would happen? She's going to lift him up. A man would have been stressed outside. He comes back home and is looking for somebody to encourage him. Two are better than one. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. He says, if they fall, they can fall physically, they may fall financially, emotionally, in health, and even spiritually. In 10 years ago, I was diagnosed with breast cancer. We didn't plan for it. That was a time of falling. There is no way you will say you may not fall. No, no, no. It's not if. It is when. And that fall can come in any form. Some people is their health. Some people is their job. Some people is, you know, their family. One challenge or the other. But because we are prepared for the time of falling, two became better than one. Praise the name of the Lord. So it says, Woe to him who is alone when he falleth. First of all, they. They fall. If they fall, that means either one can fall. And he went to say, Woe to him that is alone. So it's only one person that can decide I want to be alone when he falleth. Like I said earlier, you must be proactive. Don't wait until you have a problem because you be, before you begin to seek support from your partner. And then when you get married, stop looking at your rights. You may win the argument and still lose the battle. That's the problem. Most women, we are so emotional. We want to win every argument. Every argument. Every argument. And at the end of the day, you are pushing the second number two away 
Praise the name of the Lord. Hallelujah. So you must invest in love. You must invest in forgiveness. If you say, ah, he did this, how about you? Have you not offended before? Nobody is righteous. He says, even our righteousness has filthy rags. So you must look at the big picture. Would this marriage glorify God? And then it is with time that you are able to understand each other. You met a man who has been living alone or apart from you for 25, 30 years. You are coming from another place 25, 30 years. You must give yourself another 25 years for you to understand each other. It, you will even understand, even after the 50 years. Hallelujah. It's our 35th anniversary this year. And we still have um, times that we don't, you know, understand. But there's one beauty about that. You are able to swallow your pride. You are able to remember the good times. You are able to, you know, see the, what, what the word of God says. Not about you. It's about God. How can you satisfy God? Amen. He says, if two lie together, then they have heat. I look at that as a sexual thing. Heat. Comfort. You know? Me, yeah, sorry. You don't want me to talk about sex? We are adults here. Now, the children are in children's church. Uh -huh. If you are not getting heat, then somebody is selfish. Somebody is selfish. The person is in the way of sin. How do I know? He's alone. He's not getting heat. That means he's improvising. <laughs> Pornography. Masturbation. Sex toys. If you are not getting heat, eh? and your partner is not sensitive, then he's doing it somewhere else. He's looking at some pawns, some movies. You know, I get upset when I watch some movies. You are watching something that looks sane. The next thing, something else is happening. The Lord will deliver us from movies in Jesus' name. He will deliver us from social media in Jesus' name. Praise the name of the Lord. When two are together, the Bible says one will chase a thousand and two, we put 10,000 to flight. The Bible tells us in 1 Peter chapter 3, verse 7. It says, likewise, ye husbands, dwell with them. Dwell with who? We. Women. Dwell with us, women. According to knowledge. Giving honor unto the wife as unto the weaker self. That's rather. We are not weak, oh. We are not weak. But we are the ones that you should honor. And as being heirs together of the grace of life, that your prayers be not hindered. You want God to answer that prayer? Make peace with your wife. You want God to answer your prayer? Make peace with your husband. There are many things that we're still going to talk about, especially when we raise the questions. Let me just hang my boots here and allow my husband to say one or two things. God bless you. Praise God. Alright, my better half has said a lot of things. Um, but let me be uh, honest to tell you that marriage is not easy. Marriage is never easy. Marriage may look like a cage where there is no escaping from. But it's a sweet cage. Hallelujah. There's always honey in that cage. If you know how to uh, drill for the honey. You know, my grandfather told me a long time ago, and I think we learned it in Yoruba folklore in primary school. Oni suru lonfun warakinyo. That is, it's only the patient that can milk a lion or a lioness in this case. So if you know a lioness, how many of them are around us? If you're a man of patience, 
you will know how to milk that lioness. Because to approach a lion, you have to be gentle, you have to be kind, you have to be nice. You know, I'll tell you a story of a man that came to the house one day. He came from work, he was very tired. But he was also irritated by the traffic and all the problems on the road. Then he entered the house, he saw death. He said, who, who is the goat that put this here? When the guy saw one thing in the pot, like he said, who is the goat that put the pot here? He went everywhere, everybody, goat, goat, go, everybody running up and down. Then when night came, he lied down on the bed, as usual, reached out for the wife. The wife said, eh, eh, go and meet your goat. <laughs> That goat you have been chasing since morning, you will see the goat now. Go and meet your goat. So, marriage is give and take. And somebody said, if you are going to fish in the night, as a man, I'm talking to the men now, if you are going to fish in the night, you will start being nice and kind from the morning. Yes. Because if you mess up in the morning and carry briefcase, oh, big man, they go office. Nonsense. I can't take nonsense. You will come back to take that nonsense. You will come back to take that nonsense. Because somebody is waiting. And is even digging into two, three years before that nonsense happened. So when you come back home, you arrive and you say, hey, Darling, I hope everything is okay. Food is I said, no. You go back to that money. Let us start again. What happened? <laughs> so you know that... Uh, Marriage is not easy. You know? And if you tell a lie, there is a way that the lie will, you know, unbundle itself and then a spouse will come. So one, one time ago, I lied. I never like to come back from the office to tell my wife that we went, you know, for luncheon and there are women there because that's the first question. Why there are women there? So after some time, I got tired of these questions. So, if we went out to eat, either I don't talk about it. If I talk about it, I say, oh, we went just somewhere. We boys, guys, we went somewhere. Now, one day I came. We had serious Chinese lunch. I didn't want to tell her. There are women. So, I said, we went to my uh, August house to eat lunch. And the man had just moved. So, he said, you went to his new house. I said, yes, sir, we had lunch. It was beautiful. Two weeks after. Two weeks after, I'd forgotten the lie. My boss did not come to office for two, three days, so we were worried. I used my mouth to go home and told my wife, said, you know what? We have not seen my boss. So, so he said, ah, why don't you go looking for him? And I said, we have not even... I said, we don't even know his uh, new house. You know? When I told that lie, when we were living in Aguda, I was in the kitchen. And as I came to the room, I knew something had gone wrong. But I couldn't put my hand on it. So, as I was wearing my trouser, she came in. Say, said, hey, so, you went to your August house two weeks ago to have lunch. Say, eh? The trouser dropped. So I said, okay, okay, I want to tell the truth now. No more lying. And this is why I've been lying. So I told her, this is why I've been lying. I don't like telling you women are always with us and all that. If you can promise me that when I tell you we had women were there, you will not trouble me. I'll be telling the truth. So it is an interesting place to be in marriage. For those who are not yet married, God will surely give you your life partners. The one that will make your home. You know, we are singing that hymn. It won't be a house. It will be a home. A home of joy. A home you want to run to after office. After church. You just want to go home. That's why I don't have many friends. I just want to go home and be with my friend. You know? And then, even if we fight inside that house, we must resolve the matter. We must. 
even if it takes one day, two days, you know, it's gotten better, gotten better, and it gets better and better every day, and sweeter and sweeter. There used to be a time before we knew the Lord that my grand, my father would come from Ibadan to settle our cases. Yes, you know, but after we found Christ, it's like peace came, and then daddy never came again. We will resolve our problems ourselves, and then we'll go on. So it is a beautiful place to be. I don't want to talk too much. I want to believe the questions are flowing to the ushers. But you know, two are better than one. That word one, you know, is a word that God loves so much. One. Because God, the Trinity, God is three in one. Everything that has come from one, O-N-E, Lone, alone, loneliness, lonely, is from the fact that there is one. You see, but as interesting as we're talking about two are better than one today, it is in God's heart that we all become one with him. That's his purpose. He created us as one with him, in him. The way he wanted somebody to go down to the earth, to do some work for him, work of dominion and rulership and government, he had to form man. He took his spirit and created flesh for his spirit. But ever since he parted with man, he's always wanted man to come back inside of him. That's the plan of God. Even though things happened, man fell, and then the redemption plan and everything that's happening now, it is all to bring man back to him. And that's why Revelation 19, 6 to 9, tells us about the marriage of the Lamb. We all are going to be married to Christ and we become one. Ephesians 1, 10 tells us also that God will gather us all together in one. But, you see, when marriage comes, that two come together as one, spiritually, there are still two physically, two physical beings. And the Bible has told us that two are better than one. And the NLT version, which I like in verse 9, going to 10, says, they can help each other to succeed. That's why two are better than one, so that they can help each other to succeed. So if one will chase just a thousand, then two will chase ten thousand. That's powerful. Not twenty, not one thousand, then two are chasing two thousand or one thousand plus one. No, ten thousand. So it shows you the multiplier effect of man and woman at home. So let the questions come. But we want to tell you that our own marriage has been a testimony and is sweet and is still sweet. And that is the plan of God for us. Marriage should be sweet. If something is not happening well, then that marriage needs healing. And we pray that God will heal marriages here today in the mighty name of Jesus. It takes two people to humble themselves to enjoy marriage. When I enter my house and I lock the door, I am a different person. I am a different person. I become a servant at home. A servant at home. That's who a husband is. Not a lion. Not a lion. Shouting. So that the neighbors can hear that you have come. Mama Jukudi, where is my food? Where is my food? Everybody knows you are hungry. And you like food too much. They know when you come in. How many people know that the neighbors know when they come in? Yeah, yeah, they know when you come in. Some people even pack her, they know wow, 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 three times before they put off the dish. Why? Lion has come. Be a humble husband. Quiet husband. When you're at home, nobody needs to know. That's why they could not tell Jesus from the disciples. Nobody knew Jesus. Judas had to say, is the person I kiss so if not, you go and kiss Pastor Emekus. <laughs> hey? Quiet, humble, you know, unassuming. 
That's who a husband should be at home. A husband that washes plate after being served. Eh? Not sitting there. Hey, where is that my remote? Where is that my remote? <laughs> he will even call somebody to come and bring stool so that he can lift up his legs. Nega! Bring, bring, bring stool. I want to raise my legs. All right. A good husband is a servant at home. He is serving the whole family. And that's how they love him and honor him. Ask my wife here. Served all my children until they left home one by one. And after leaving you, I said, Go. This house, no be your own again. You don't go. It's for my wife and I. I don't pray for them to return. They will never return in that sense. Oh, women should be married and go. Husband should go away. Am I? They say where I left my parents in Ibadan, I came to Lagos. I never went back to claim my room in Ibadan. They will go. And then there will be two of you left. That's where you know the real people. That's why some people just be complaining every day. They wake up, mommy, complain, complain, complain. And some women will be searching for children. Children that have left. Say, I want to go and visit them. No, stay with your husband. One day, the first time we went to America, 1999, the first time I was struggling. Say, I make man discover America like Christopher Columbus. <laughs> Say, this America, I must have the place. As we landed, we never do anything. My wife said, Can we call the children? I said, Oh, God. What's wrong with women and children? As if the children were tied to an apron. I said, Children, we have come here to. Ah. Well, if you want to enjoy, you better. <laughs> So I said, okay, okay, let's find a place to call the children. Quickly said to that. I said, after, yeah, you are okay now. Uh -huh, let's go. All right, are, are we, you know, we warming up? Yes. Hallelujah. Marriage is sweet. There is something I learned again about marriage. Do you know that the husband of the Virgin Mary was chosen by God? How do I know? He was the only man qualified to take that message that the woman he will marry has already get, gotten belly. Some men cannot take it. I cannot take it. Say, I want to marry a woman, virgin, and then he get belly. And then you ask him, he say, Holy Spirit. We Holy Spirit. How many men can take that story? Deacon, you can't take this. I know, I know. Where is the Holy Spirit? You can't even see the Holy Spirit. Bele, ah, ah, is not possible. But there was one man that could understand. He was a chosen husband. God knows that your husband is your husband. He chose him for you. Hallelujah. Okay, we'll sit here. Eh? Yeah. All right. So, the, when Virgin Mary gave the news to Joseph, I don't get Belial. <laughs> Joseph said, hey, we can't be this. But God knew his heart. God knew that he was a meek and gentle and loving man. So God visited him at night and spoke to his ears. That thing that Virgin Mary told you is true, is from me. That pregnancy... Keep on very well for me, okay? So the same man had that story. The Bible says, if you see Matthew 1, 24, it says, he obeyed as the angel of the Lord had told him. He obeyed. Very obedient man. And for nine months, he did not touch that woman. And yet he was married. He went ahead with the marriage. They conducted it. Brought the woman to his house. Pregnancy carried for nine months and then the child was delivered. It was after that that he could touch the woman. Some of us men could not wait. You will not wait. As they look you, you will not wait. 
<laughs> eh? Patience is good, though. And that's why it's part of the fruit of the spirit. We don't have it as uh, human beings. We don't have patience. Go on the road, you will see. We don't have patience. People don't wait for traffic lights. You see them? You see them? Okay, we ready, ma'am? Yes. All right. Okay. Maybe this will go. Yes. Yes, it will go. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you very much. A round of applause for Pastor Tunde and Pastor Mrs. Bimbo Nokoya. Thank you so much. In case you are wondering, this is actually not a very quiet church. It's just because they, they usually would express through their questions. So there are lots of them, and I believe that would have many more. Uh, please, if you still have questions. Please, if you still have any more questions, please, um, you could write. And I also, yes, thank you. Okay. Technical, you need to help us because then there are going to be three mics that are going to be speaking. So we need to. All right. Okay. <laughs> I bet the only one who just noticed that this little bit of a, uh, yes, you know how that uh, when, when they do marriage uh, in church, they'll say initially the wife will sit here, later she sits here. I honestly don't remember those things. I have things to learn as well. God will help me. When a husband comes home insulting and comparing the wife to other people and say things in a condescending manner, as a wife, what do you do? How do you handle situations like this? Am I to answer that? Yes, ma'am. <laughs> hmm. I said it the other time that it's not the argument you win today that is important. When it comes like that, you be ready. You can be ready spiritually. That's in the place of prayer. Maybe it's been at one thing or the other going well. So be ready with that. Be ready with what will give him joy. Some husbands come home, the house is dirty. Just look at yourself. How are you dressed? What do you look like? Maybe he's seen some fine, you know, well-dressed, decently dressed ladies outside at work. And then he comes back home and you're tying rapper. Your hair is not done. So as we are doing spiritual, please do physical as well. And then, after praying, call him and ask him, what is going on? Are you okay? At times, these men grew up in homes where they seek attention. Maybe he just needed attention. Just ask him, darling, what's going on with you? How is work? You know, if you don't ask, you don't know. You only be guessing. Pray on your knees, ask him, and then prepare yourself as well. Prepare the home front. So most men come home, the house is untied, the children are all over the place. So look inwards and then look outwards. Praise the Lord. There are two questions here that are related, and I think this question will be for both of you. So what advice do you have for a Christian man whose wife has refused him touching her because she says she no longer wants kids? And closely related to that is this question that says, what advice do you give a Christian husband as well whose wife is tormenting him through her bad character to the point that the man is now getting suicidal? All right. So the question will be separated. Uh, so the first one, please. I'm just trying the to second. find um, how to ask, are we born again? You know, when you hear such questions, it's like, we need to go back to ask ourselves, do we really know what it means to be born again? maybe many of us have not really died you know and i can tell you the difference because we got married when we did not know christ but when 
I got born again, I knew that I was a useless guy. And I thought I was doing well. So, we need to check whether we are truly born again. And if not, we deal with that first. We go back to God and confess and get ourselves right. Now, we know what the Bible says. We ought not deprive each other. So, if a man and a woman are married, sex is a beautiful thing to enjoy. But when things are not right, it's the only weapon the woman has. Because the woman's heart has to be there, unlike the man. You know, I think it was here that we talked about man being rice and women are beans. Women take a lot of time to cook, to get ready, to think about sex. Man can think about sex after church, immediately, on the way. And he's getting home. He says, oh yeah, let's have it. And the woman says, what? Uh, did you hear Pastor Ebeka preach powerfully today? What did you learn? Say, well, 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 leave that one, leave that one. That's a man. So women take time to cook and get ready. And if you obstruct that part, then you spoil things. I know at times when I spoil things. <laughs> I know at times when I've used my hand to spoil something, I, and I will tell myself, this thing will not come today. <laughs> and it will not come. There is no point. I know the answer to the question. I don't need to. So the thing is to prepare how to ensure that tomorrow I can pass. <laughs> That's women for you. She cannot feign it. Only prostitutes can do that. A married woman, a wife, cannot feign that love. That love is genuine. When it's genuine, she gives herself. She gives herself to you. Um, technically, okay. no, I think, I think it's praise the name of the Lord. If you deny your husband, you are doing two things. You are offending God and you are pushing the man away. When I was overwhelmed, we were in the East then. So I said to my um, pastor's wife, the provincial pastor then, state pastor's wife, I said, ah, this thing, is it food? She said, ah, you better ask God to give you the grace. So I started asking God for grace. Even when the grace came, I had to look for a way to cope my own way. And the first thing is, see sex in two dimensions. One as a duty. The other one as pleasure. There are times you have to do it as a duty. And then, there are times you have to do for pleasure. But let the time for pleasure be much more than the time for duty. You can't hold it. If you hold it, you are denying yourself joy. If anything happens, you are sick, the man's heart will not be there to take care of you. I would have died if my husband had not prayed me out of breast cancer. I'm telling you. So invest in that man. Men are wired differently. Give it to him. You and you too, we enjoy it. It's not like, ah, God, please help us in Jesus' name. And I, I would like us to, I think that, um, yes, um, the, the one about the suicide, is, I think is a lot for me, and I think we really need to talk about it, because he's saying that, um, well, generalizing to say that his wife's bad character, and the man in this question is suicidal. For someone to write in, this man in this question, do we have words for him? He's suicidal because of the character of the wife. I, suicidal means somebody wants to he kill wants himself. He wants to, yes. <laughs> Probably also means that she's not aware and he may, she, she may just come back home and he's gone. Well, why would somebody want to kill himself? A Christian? Be, okay. The, again, we go back to the 
concept of being born again. Let us assume your wife is not born again. Because if you can see that the character is bad, it means she doesn't have the character of Jesus yet. So, first thing as a man, if you do have that character, I'm assuming that you are born again. Then you have to pray her in. You have to pray for her again. That's the aspect of prayer that we, a lot of times, we are missing now because of the pressures of life. It is so important. If my wife has bad character or something I notice that's not right, I need to go to God to say that there's something going on I don't understand. Help me, Lord, and help her. And what does the Bible say again? You use your own good self to change that character by being good yourself. So, look inwards first and see how you can help her. Why would I want to keep myself? Why? So many things to do to enjoy in this life. If she had gone 10 years ago, there are so many things she would have missed. The joy of children graduating, getting married, and all that, and all that. Why would you want to miss all that? So, this love is worth exploring. And if your wife has bad character, that's her falling or her low point. Help her. Bring her back up so that she can be somebody you can show off outside and say, this is my wife. Amen? Amen. If I can put in my own word, we got married um, as um, worldly people, so to say. We're not born again. But, you know, after we got born again, there was um, a sermon that I heard, or maybe I read the Bible to 1 Corinthians chapter 13. And I picked, love does not keep record of wrongs. If your heart is so deep, you are not forgiven, then there's no way you can behave well. So the man should think about it and ask his wife, why was she behaving or why is she behaving like that? She has something in her heart that she has not forgiven. The minute I stopped keeping record of wrongs, life became better. And you know, you are shooting yourself in the feet. Because as you are thinking, you are going to have high blood pressure. And then the person may have stroke. So you are actually doing yourself a bad deal if you refuse to forgive. So that woman that is misbehaving, there is something inside that she is you know, reacting to. That is making her to do that. And the husband should, like he said, draw out the milk from the lion. And then you see life will be better. Why would you kill yourself? If you kill yourself, you won't see heaven, no. Yes. That it's a sin. You cannot even create an act that you want to kill yourself. You and, cannot and see somebody Jesus. Somebody will take your place here or not. That that wife. I cannot take that. <laughs> I cannot take that. I always pray, Father, don't let anybody replace me. As a husband. Yes. So somebody will now go and, re and marry your wife. Don't die, yo. don't kill yourself. At times I wake up, I say, Nami, get this thing. How can I kill myself? Uh, somebody will come and say, uh, Madam, go help you. Uh, I can be helping you too. No way. Praise the name of the Lord. Thank you very much. There's a question here for, um, there are two, but I'll just probably take it together. It says, I'm an unmarried Christian lady and I'm extremely worried because of the fights and the arguments that I see in Christian homes. I believe that no home is truly happy and they are just managing each other. What do I do to marry right? And closely linked to that is um, another one who says... Okay. Okay. Yes, uh, um, she's a Christian. Yes, but Christian. she believes that no um, Christian home is truly happy and that they are all just managing each other. Uh, that's so, a fallacy. That's a me because this home, we are happy. Ooh, so she has not seen many that. homes. Right. So maybe she has seen a few homes where there are a lot of fights and all that. You know. But ideally, we should not use such to generalize. 
a lot of people use one example and say, ah, that's how it's happening all over the world. You have not seen the world. You have not seen homes. So you go to a home where things are working perfectly, where they love God and, you know, things are working, and then you learn, how are they doing it? Because it means some people did not get something right. Add to that. Okay. Um, I think um, what I want to contribute there is that if you see that there are many marriages that are not working, why don't you make your mind up that you be an example when you enter that institution? Example of a good home. I made my mind up. If I'm going to go about talking about marriage, my home must be peaceful, blissful. I must be able to sincerely encourage some people to be married, number one, and then to make heaven some people will not make heaven because of their marriage. That will not be your portion in Jesus' name. So what can she do? She asks, pray before you marry. And when you are entering, don't enter with all your hopes high. Know that it is a work. It is a marathon. It is little by little, step after a step. And then you will get there. 35 years, we had our own challenges. But now it's only two of us at home. And we are having fun. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And then people need to know that marriage is not competition. There is no perfect marriage anywhere. Ours is not perfect. Yours may be sweeter. So it's not competition. It is complementing each other or completing each other. It's not competition. So people need to understand that. Please, yes. Thank you very much, sir. And Ma, someone is asking um, for someone who's married and um, the husband or the wife likes to have a me time um, and likes to go out and hang out with his or her friends without the spouse. When is it too much? What's the frequency that that party is allowed to be by themselves with me time? Emphasis on me by themselves without the other partner. Me time. As I said, I truly don't have much of that. If only for sports these days, I do have me time. But you see, what is me time? That person has to define me time. Is it me time with unworldly, I mean, ungodly people? If it's me time with godly people, then he may, you know, yield good fruits. If it's me time at the club, if it's me time with people who are drinking alcohol and carrying, talking women, it is not a good me time. You better spend that me time at home. There are times when we don't watch the same thing on TV. Thank God we have two televisions. So some time ago, we didn't have one. <laughs> yeah, I remember when we got the first TV. Yeah? With all my salary, we bought one small color TV, 40 inches. It was near Christmas. Then Christmas came. My wife said, where is chicken? Where? I said, we use all the money. <laughs> See the thing. And then she was crying. I said, how can I ever satisfy this woman? So God has blessed you. You have another TV sitting room. You know, and all that. She watches football with me. Not every time, but eh, most times I will have to say that's the referee. <laughs> oh, dear, dear, dear. But you see, is you know that togetherness you can't take it away from her. I now love her own, you know, uh, program. When it's five o'clock, I'm getting ready for our program. And if we have to make food, I say, you know, we have to make food so that I can be eating while you are enjoying yourself. I'm also enjoying myself. You know, so, you know, that, that living together, that dwelling together, that building together, you will find little time for me time outside your home. That's the truth. So pray that uh, both of you, because it is after the children have left home that you truly know a couple that's united. During the COVID, eh, in my estate, people were lamenting. And I was laughing. Because it was the first time they stayed at home for that long. 
I, I, I was pretending I was enjoying, I mean, I was with them. He said, Oga, how did they manage? <laughs> eh? Man never come out since two weeks now. He been like saying a prison. <laughs> On the road. See, he says, yeah, geez, the house is so hot. Eh? They see you every time and problems, you know, and all that. So that's how life is. But when you enjoy it, you know, it was at that time I gained weight. Because I was now enjoying it so much, eating three times daily. <laughs> eh? Most of us will watch uh, Sunday service, drinking tea and having breakfast. Abby, that's how we were doing during COVID lockdown. I got fat. Okay, the me time thing. I understand that um, this um, generation, they want to still have their lives. Unlike when we married, it was imposed on us. You cannot tell your husband you want to have me time. The man even you explain to you why where he's going. So the, the, the times are changing. And I just pray that the husband or the wife, they will carry each other along. Begin to look out for what you can do together that is interesting. Don't let it be that when he goes out and you'll be sulking, you know. When my husband would go play tennis, I would start doing something else to keep myself busy. At first, I told my daughter, I said, he's going to play tennis again, no. She said, mom, just do something else so that by the time he comes back, the two of you, you know, will be on the same page. And that's what helped me. Because you go for tennis from 9 till 2 p.m. I got lonely. So those times, begin to look for what to do so that you won't be lonely. And then the two of you sit down and agree what you can do that will be interesting to both of you. That way, you can have your me time and have your together time. Even at the club, when I'm leaving, they are begging me not to leave. Yeah, yeah, people. I say, I say my wife, they, house, and they go home. You know, they don't want you to go. They just be talking, drinking. You do this. I say, eh, me, I go. And they know when my wife is not around. I say, oh, ah, Pastor, you never go. See, this generation, as she said, they have one leg out of the church, one leg in the church. And that's the problem. We know a couple that the husband said either Wednesday or Thursday was me time with the boys. Problem. And then they are struggling now because uh, a woman crept in. That's it. Thank you very much, sir. Mm. There's a question here that says, how do you treat the husband that comes back? Two related questions. How do you treat the husband that comes back from the office and is always angry? And after ex um, the wife is asking him for what the reason is, he will still be angry with everyone in the house. Um, and when they try to talk about it, his response will be, I beg, just let me be. And closely related to it is this husband, the wife says, my husband is like nothing you have described. I have prayed and fasted. He is highly opinionated, yet he is a believer. I'm tired and recently considering divorce since I am now financially empowered. Mm. He doesn't believe in counseling, saying that everyone has issues. What do I do? So it's the deeper level of that first question. Do you want to go first? No, sir. You go ahead. Hey. You want to think. Uh, it's a real life situation. Um, we have to first be spiritual. I, I can't remove that spiritual gap now. Uh, if, if this was 32 years ago, maybe I will say something first. But once a partner is not doing things that he or she should do well as a Christian. That person needs prayer. Prayer, and then if, for example, you approach the pastor, you can talk to the pastor about it, and then the pastor will pray and continue to pray for you. That man or that woman needs prayer for he or she to see how to behave well. There is no way the pastor will come and be, you know, uh, watching the man at home. A lot of people in the church are very nice 
you know, workers, ministers. But when they get home, they are different. And the pastor can never know. And only the wives know who we are. Only the wives know us. You know, and that's why <laughs> if, I'm, if we're quarreling, I'm thinking Thursday, Friday, this quarrel must end though. How can I carry this to church? There is no way you can flow. There is no way. You sit down, husband sit down, they are fighting. And you come to church and carry microphone and be talking to who? You know, so a lot of things will go wrong. And you better resolve it quickly. So I don't know where to hide. If the husband is misbehaving, you go to God first. If he's not changing, go to the man of God next. And if that is not working, maybe you can approach the parents. We used to, I don't know now whether it's a good advice. If the, if the parents are not born again, you may not get godly counsel. You know, but to consider divorce or something is yeah, not the best. The wife actually, sorry, the wife actually said that the, he doesn't believe in counseling, saying that everyone has problems. doesn't believe in counseling. Yes. Yeah, he's a peculiar man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's a peculiar man. And if he doesn't change, God will deal with him. If he does not change, God will deal with him. If he doesn't believe in counseling, that means he will not respect anybody, not even the man of God. Then that man is doomed. It's a matter of time. But if you love him, you have to be praying for him that he will not die. Because if God is angry with him, God will take him away and replace him. And I keep praying, God should never replace me. Uh, so some men want to be replaced. It's okay. They can do what they like if they want to be replaced. This, this question says, so it's about the opposite sex. So two questions, I'll just read it together. What's your take on keeping close relationship with the opposite sex? And this is not a case of insecurity. So the person added that. We both have male and female friends and have been married for over 10 years. But there's this particular case of a single young lady who has requested for close rapport due to her state of loneliness. Is this appropriate, sir? And then, oh, the, the, even the church is chorusing. Um, the wife is lonely. The woman... Yes, yeah, she's asking for a close rapport with the other person's husband because she's lonely. Okay. And then... Another question here related to that. Is there any moral justification... No, it's related. Is there any moral justification for any married man or woman to have the opposite sex as the bestie or confidant or advisor? Opposite sex as bestie. I think the people have already. Yes. <laughs> we, we should look at Daddy Adeboe. He has said it severally. Severally. Your secretary should not even be a female. Let's be careful. Praise the name of the Lord. Person body no be firewood. That's what they say. You begin to tell the other person about your wife. You begin to say, when you have little problem, they will capitalize on it and come in between you. I expect that somebody that has been married for 10 years would have some wisdom. And the head right is screwed on. Why would you call the opposite sex your bestie? If your spouse is not your bestie, you are in the wrong place. And there are many demons... They are going about like women and men looking for homes to destroy. You better take your husband and your wife by force. Praise the name of the Lord. All right. The gentleman needs to know the truth. Uh, that woman is a devil in disguise. And it's a matter of time she will make you fall. So his best advice that you stay away and put some distance between you and that woman. We used to have best friends from secondary schools, universities, you know, and all that. But there is no way I can bring them over. It's just not possible. It's not right. You know? Even to really have time speaking on the phone is, is really difficult. So it's better, yeah, how are you, how are you, how are your children? How is your husband? 
you know, and all that. And if she's lonely, you don't want to go there. You can only pray for her. Don't go there, I beg. Please. It is so dangerous, so risky. Okay, there seems to be lots of... Maybe so that maybe they will just put a word together for that. Um, there seems to be a lot of questions about... Um, so one says, um, what do I do if um, my wife's quali um, love language is quality time um, and I want some time for myself? And there's another one that also says that... Um, um, a wo so this is from a woman saying that the husband has refused to accept the reality of being married. He loves to spend time alone and hardly even initiate sex. Uh, hardly? Yes. The man. A different man. A very different man. <laughs> there are two things. Either he's not a man or he's getting it somewhere. So he comes home and pretends that he doesn't want it. A man is a lion. A lion. An animal. That has to be tamed. You know, so if he's not doing it at home, he's doing it outside. So, but that's, that's the naked truth. Now, so why wouldn't, you know, a man, because we have testosterone in us. And that's, that's the hormone. So maybe he needs medical checkup again. They should go and check whether it's progesterone that he has instead of testosterone. That means he has ability to be pregnant. Very soon he will be pregnant. <laughs> so um, if he's not, uh, let us first look inwards. Let the woman look inwards. Is there something I'm doing that's not making me attractive to him or something. Check yourself. Like uh, my dear wife said, are you beautiful? Are you making yourself beautiful? Do you bathe at the right time? You know, you shouldn't be perceiving some, uh, you know, malodor. You know, and all that. Do all that way. Make the house nice and warm for him to come into. And test you know that if it's not working then the man has a problem you know that you may not be able to help him maybe god will help him or somebody else will help him but a man that does not initiate sex at all what what did he like when you were caught him mm -hmm. what yes. did the man like go look at your wedding picture what was your size then and what is your size now those are little, little tips. If you are so different from what you used to be, it could be a turn off for the man. Pastor was saying, is he a man? He may be a man, and then your armpit is smelling. The wife's armpit is not shaven. And then you wear dress. You say you are wearing pants. <laughs> dress, which is dress? You Please. <laughs> Please. You are not wearing it for outsider. Go and look for some tongues. Amen. Yes. Amen. For your husband. Amen. When he comes Glory. back home, where it's under your lingerie. Amen. So he's looking and saying, ah, is this my wife? You don't need to beg him. He will initiate him normally. Praise the no, name of the it, Lord. It's, it's true. Let, let me speak about that. You know, the Bible says we should be naked to each other. Not many women are naked at home. Even when they are, it's only uh, she and the husband. She will still tie everything and all that, like masquerade at home. Why? Why? Now, truly speaking, if, if you have a challenge with the body, maybe carelessness, you know, some fat have come in there, make up your mind that I want to do something about it. And talk to your husband to help you. I will want to help. Say, I, I think I've gained some little weight. I need help, you know, and all that. And both of us will work hard to make sure that that, you know, thing that used to excite me returns, you know? So, bathe very well. Be attractive to the man at home. Be naked, as the Bible says, to each other. And you'll not be ashamed. Don't be ashamed. Ah! Uh, I, I don't complain about Nepal these days. 
if it's not there it means that uh, nobody will wear cloth i like it amen <laughs> Sela, I'm, I'm sure somebody has decoded that already yeah. this question here so this is a neglected wife he says please sir what can a woman do if she has been neglected because of health challenges and she gave birth through cs um, and says god will bless you for us so here is obviously a man who thinks that um, because his wife is had CX, he's not been, they have not been sexually active. Okay. So what, what do they do in this scenario? What does she do? Uh, I don't know what happens with CX. As I thought when they open, they sew back. You know, is, is there been a problem with the sewing or something needs to be done? I, I don't know. I don't think CX should be what you refer to as health challenge. They do it every day, especially abroad. They won't even let you push. But afterwards, are you doing little, little exercises? You know, you can walk. Walk until you sweat. Okay? Like I said, this, the way men are wired are different, or it's different. So, it's not because you are looking for excuse. You know, thank God for the baby that came. But don't let that be what will bury your marriage. Please do something about yourself. If you cannot exercise, then reduce the intake. What you are eating. You too, you will feel better if you look good. Thank you. Thank you. So these are two related questions on, about sex as well. What advice can you give to a woman whose husband has erection problems and the wife has not had sex for more than two years? Ah! And, 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 it's, and if, I can, if I can just permit me to just read this because it's also related. Okay. So um, this woman says, what advice can you give a married Christian woman? Um, my husband is in diaspora. But he uses sex toys. Can she use them as well? So, related, no sex. Does she want to follow him to hell? So, please, when you gratify the flesh with sex toys, when the man or the woman is there, you can't be excited anymore. Okay? What was the first question again? Erection problems, Erection and they've not had sex that, for that, two that, years. That, have they sought medical help? If they've not done that, then they should see, you know, how to sort it out medically. But if a man is eating healthy, exercising, you know, avoiding some stuff, go online. You will see what can help you. If you are not able to pay medical bills, there must be a, a medical doctor in the church. Talk to somebody in the church that can help you medically. But it's not what should be. Two years? There's no way the man won't misbehave. There's no way the woman won't behave, misbehave. God did not ask us to wait two years. Eh? For example, the people that will say they are fasting, and then they will deny their wives. The Bible says, carry your partner along. If she says don't fast, then don't fast. Talk less of two years. It's suicidal. Please see a medical doctor. Right. One thing I know about men, especially when this erection problem comes, impotency and all that, is that they are first afraid. Fear comes. Denial. And then they want to hide. You know, it happens also when people are diagnosed with cancer. The first thing is they want to run away or hide. And that's where the challenge is. If a man has a problem, he should first, you know, talk to other men. Uh, I know two people in my estate who have talked to me about this problem. And they can't possibly discuss with their wives. They are embarrassed. They have fears you, that, you know, when a man cannot be a man, when a lion cannot hunt, it's a problem. You know? It is. So... When a man is sitting down and looking at, looking at his beautiful wife, shaking his head, he has a problem. There is a man that uh, was paralyzed. My brother told me this story. You know, when he's uh, on, he will just be sweating. 
but he was impotent. You know, he would just be sweating. And that's how you know that uh, the man is feeling something, but the erection can never come. So when a lion is sitting down sweating, it's a problem. So the woman should help the man. That's the time when we say better for worse. This marriage oath or vow, better for better for worse. That's the worst time now to help your husband get the thing back up. Yeah. Because that's when the lion can move. So help the man to solve that problem. You can't wait two years. Why? Ask him what you know, excites him. Go medically, find uh, what, where the problem is, do spiritually and all that, be praying about it. How many people have received the miracles at the camp? Impotency. Yeah. When you see the thing rise, it's joy. Joy, serious joy. When it's not rising, it's sadness, sorrow. Pain. It's sorrow. A man is in deep sorrow when he can't be a man. So it's not a small problem. It's a big one. Don't wait till it's two years. I will not wait if I have this problem. I will not wait one month safe. I must find solution. Uh -uh. Why wait two years? So find help. Medically, see godly counsel. Pray about it. And then uh, talk with your woman. Women like to be taken along on that kind of platform. But when you don't talk with your woman and you go outside and just be, the woman is not happy. Mm. The woman is not happy. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I also, um, please, the, the person in question should probably, we have a doctor in house who will be able to refer to a urologist. Those are the specialists that handle men, erection problems, and all that. Yeah, so thank you. medically. Some men don't like people who know people around them. Okay. So, hey, if the person see is me, ready, share my number with that man or the woman. I will talk to the man. He will not talk to Pastor Emekus because he say, "Ah, Pastor Emekus will know my problem." That's what happens. Right. right. But he's a pastor. He should know your problem and pray. He will not tell uh, Pastor Mrs. Uh, Shadi. Say, what if he tells the wife? The every all the people will know that I have problem. That's the problem with the man. He won't go. And find solution. So you share your own number. Share my number with that man. So, so Let's please. get you back up. <laughs> yes. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Amen. Hope for the dead. Hallelujah. Yes. So please, that means you share your number, sir. They'll probably. Yes. Yes. yes, yes so we take it. Okay. Right on the screen. Okay. Not women. No men. No men. Men. Not on the screen. <laughs> right. Okay, this is um, also, in fact, this handwriting looks angry. It says, my wife hardly ever initiates sex. And this is an issue for me, because it comes with an exclamation mark afterwards. Any biblical laws against women initiating sex? No. No. It's a tradition and upbringing. And you need to draw the woman out of that. You don't know how she grew up. You don't know what the parents told her. And then, you know, the, the, the thing behind her thinking is it is, um, it is loose women that initiate sex. If she's had babies for you, you've had sex before, what are you hiding? So tell her, darling, come. Make me happy. Such, yes, it's your wife. You, I mean, she's owing you that. Tell her, this is what I want. This is how I want to be excited. Okay? Don't do things that are not uh, palatable. But, you know, carry her along and she will be. So let her be free. Maybe you are judging her. And then she's not able to be confident when it comes to, to sex. So you wait on the bedroom before you allow her to be free. Okay, so she may be seeing you as a father or as a mom that had, you know, pushed that desire out of her system. Praise the Lord. Yes, two things. I, I know that person must be fairly middle age, you know, coming to her age kind of uh, person. Because the younger generation, the women initiate to. They don't care. They, they initiate, they are freer, you know, and all that. These days, we see women proposing. <laughs> proposing, will you marry me? Yeah, so those ones, our children are freer. 
But our generation were not too free with that. Somebody would think, ah, maybe she he would think that I... But when you are married, when both of you are married, what, where are the... You should remove all these uh, walls. Yes. But the problem is usually communication. Yeah. And it's that man that's at fault. A man should excite his woman so much that the woman will want to want it. She will want it. And she will initiate it. And you will know, even if she's not somebody that says, Daddy, I want sex. No woman talks like that. <laughs> no woman talks like that. Uh, come, oh, I'm going in now. Maybe you will come. Let us have sex. <laughs> but there is a way the woman, you know, when you know your woman, you watch her moves. You watch the way she's, her eyes are different. And uh, yeah. You know that uh, anointing must flow. Time must be coming. And then you go on being a good boy. That's why I will go to the kitchen and wash all the plates and pots. And then she will say, what are you still doing in the kitchen? I say, should I come? <laughs> communication. <laughs> Body language is 77% of our communication. Not words. If you say that there, and holding, I want her to initiate sex today. It's not going to happen. And then when it happens, please make sure she's happy. Ah. Don't just do and leave the you place have to now. Thank her. You have to thank her. Eh? I mean, if you make your woman happy, there is no way she won't want it. But you go in, you give it, and then you get up and leave. Who wants that? You can't come back next time, oh. So if you don't settle men, me, men here now, and you are settling yourself, it's not going to work, my brother. Here now, man, truly speaking, and I keep telling my wife, I'm a man first before man of God. Uh, I leave the Bible. I, I'm, I'm wired by the Bible now, but when it comes to, I, I don't use the Bible. How many men use the Bible? I don't. I don't use the Bible. I go by the uh, flesh, the feeling, the emotions, and all that, and learn to say thank you when she settles you. It's a powerful phrase. Thank you so much for this awesome pleasure you gave me. Ah! She will give you more. Yes. Eh? They say it now. If you say thanks, then you will get more. Yes. So when I say thanks, I get more. Hallelujah. That's the only thing. It's, um, it says, if a Christian wife is cheating, what can the husband do? Ah. Ah. You see, I'll be very honest with you. It takes time before a woman will cheat. It takes time before a woman will cheat. So, the problem must be the man. The man must have done something utterly wrong before a woman would decide that she wants to get it from somewhere. So, um, it's a deep problem that needs, you know, for us to be careful about, praying about it, and all that. And to win such a woman back, there has to be serious change. So if she's willing to communicate, that is both of you are able to talk about it, she will open up and she will say why she did that thing. You know? But I know that when I hear it, it is deeper than on the surface. And we have to dig deep to find the root issue for the woman to go there. And if we can get to that, that will help the woman to change. So that is, it's a difficult one. I, I wish again is something that we can take somewhere else where nobody is to see how to resolve this problem between this couple. And if we can do it, that couple, because when a woman's heart is converted, she's converted. That's why there are many more women in church than men. When a woman is converted, she's converted. 
And that's why women can marry people like us. Yeah, not that we are good people, but uh, they, they, just, they just surrender to love better than men. And they work it out, they get deeper in it than men. So when a woman would throw 30, 35 years of marriage away for another man, that is a big problem. You know? So it's not something we can talk about here and hope that somebody will just hear it and say, okay, it's changed. So it could be the man that led the woman there by what he was doing or what he did and it was unresolved. And the woman being a human being started looking for solution to our problem. I, I like for us to always look at the big picture. All that we're doing on earth is nothing if you miss heaven. So that woman that went out of her marriage to befriend somebody else, is she planning to make heaven? Th that is the first question. Look at the big picture. We are in this world for a limited time. Are you walking towards heaven? No matter what the man has done, why would you now want to miss your own salvation? It's not worth it. Ah, please, I want to get to heaven now and see the mansion that the Lord has prepared for me. I won't come and let somebody make me to go and have boyfriend outside. What is that man going to offer you? What is he going to offer you? The Lord will help us in Jesus' name. Thank you. It says, this question says, Ah, there, are, there are still plenty of questions, though. Ah, there are plenty. <laughs> there have to be okay, um, this question, okay, so very quickly, it says, um, is it good for a wife to ask the husband to go and sleep in another room because the husband makes sounds while sleeping? A snoring husband. It is not. Hey, I think, again, uh, you have married this man for better and for worse. If he has that problem, I snow, I snow at times. Especially when I swim. When I swim, the room cannot contain me. So that's why I don't swim anymore. Now, if a man has a medical problem, it can be resolved, it can be solved. The two of you should join together to solve the problem. But I am never an advocate of leaving the room the bedroom matrimonial bed is matrimonial bed there are not two beds so whatever the problem is we still sleep on that bed and take the problem together you know that is the joy of marriage but it's not some people say it's not a bed of roses you have to walk your own even salvation is uh, working with fear and uh, trembling you have to walk your marriage and stop looking at another person's marriage. Oh, yeah, you see the way that uh, these people are doing it. Why can't you do it like that? That's a problem. Don't, don't compete and don't compare with other people. So this man has a snoring problem. Yes. Is it a medical problem? Can it be resolved? Or is it a way that he sleeps? Usually when you sleep up, you snore. When you sleep sideways, you may not snore. I found that out. When I sleep up like that, I will snore. So what I do when that happens is I wake him and tell him to turn. You know, let him turn. And then... And um, there's beauty in turning. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, I tell him to turn and then the, 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 the snoring would, you know, either reduce, the sound reduces or just something like that. Then you don't let him go to bed right after eating dinner. Okay. So if you need to walk down your street, just take a walk. The food can go down and then the snoring is reduced or taken away completely. What are your thoughts about long distance relationship or marriage? I don't um, agree to it. If it's going to be for a short while, okay. Maybe you are trying to relocate or the man is just taking a job. Just don't let it be more than a year, please. Because the devil will find work yes. for 
The Bible says it is not good for man to be alone. alone. Genesis chapter 2 from verse 15. It's a problem that God knows. It is not good for man to be alone. There is a way the devil comes. When they sent me to the east, 1996, I knew that I could not go alone. Because I've heard so much about the Ophi Oweri. I've heard so much about uh, how if you go to Calabar, they will cook soup that you will forget your wife in Lagos. So I told my wife, we are shutting down Lagos. She resisted it, but after some time she understood, I can't go there alone. Those people will eat me up. <laughs> Not physically, but... Uh, yeah, I know. And I had, I had things after. They, they, somebody told me that, you know, he went somewhere in town, and three women were saying, that man, that GM of Coca-Cola, how come he bring his wife here? <laughs> yes, women, they know. They first use your big house as party. Yeah? Party venue. Okay, no problem. We just let's just have this party here. Party, party. They say, who is that man? Ah, that's where they get you. So it's not good for man to be alone. But if work takes you, see how to make sure that the family is involved and all that. Work it out. And there is no work that will take you out of this country that they will not give your family. married partner, wife, visa. They will give you visa. So, unless you are dribbling the woman, you don't want the woman to follow you. That's when you... It is not good for man to be alone. Thank you, Jesus. The Bible says we shouldn't let the sun go down on our anger. Is it really possible to forgive any and every offense the same day? Every offense the same day. <laughs> hey. It is possible. But it may be very difficult but when you look at the scriptures and you see that they say it is the, the fool that allows anger yeah, to rest in his bosom, in the bosom of the fool. then you be careful I don't want to be a fool oh. you physically say it you know verbally that you are forgiven the man or you let him go and then you remember that your, high blood, your blood pressure is going high so you decide for your own selfish reason let the guy go with his wala. I forgive you. Okay? By the following morning, with the help of the Holy Ghost, you feel a lot better. It may take another week or two, but you are working towards forgiving him completely. It's possible. Very, but very difficult. Okay, this question has... There are two questions actually like that. and It, it says that you said marriage is between a man and, and one woman. Uh, why did the men in the Bible marry more than one wife? Somebody here talks about Abraham, David, Solomon. It may be good to, to talk about it. I cannot talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> I was not there. But what I have learned, Lord or Jesus. what I learned, is that in the New Testament, I did not find such a story. So uh, we are guided more by the New Testament of the Lord Jesus Christ. And when you go down to First Timothy and all that, it talks about how deacons and bishops must be a man that has married one wife. So I want to believe that the Christianity we, you know, uh, embrace is one that has one man, one wife in it. So if a man is going down to Abraham because he learned, read about Keturah, then let him go that way. And see what will happen to him. <laughs> you have enough trouble with one woman. You want to bring, you want to bring two, you want to bring two and three into your house. You will see war like Ukraine and Russia. <laughs> want me to say something about that? You want to add to that? Um, what's the okay, question maybe. again? One yeah, man, one wife, married, versus, two wife, more than two wives. Uh, one man, five. Okay, women. Abraham and. The Lord Jesus said that it's because of the hardness of the heart of the people that Moses gave them that law. So we got to be current with the information and the knowledge that we have. Because they asked Jesus himself, why did, why did Moses say a man should do this? He said, no, no, no. That was then. And you know, things are supposed to be clearer 
with the New Testament. So we know that that is not what the Lord that created them from the beginning had in mind. And Jesus said it. He said, from the beginning, he that made them, made them man yes. and wife. So don't go to Abraham. Don't go to Moses. Yes. Solomon. The, the word of God. Solomon. Genesis chapter 2. Don't go to Solomon. Genesis 2.24. A man will leave his family and cleave to his wife. Wife. He's not, not wife. pluralized. He's not pluralized. Mm. Thank you so much. It's, um, this question, well, more of a comment, I think. It says, is Christian marriage, are Christian marriages perfect? Because according to the teachings of Paul, he was advising the unmarried and the widows to remain like him. What was it? Is Christian marriage... Are Christian marriages perfect? You know. Perfect. I don't know the concept of perfection there, but even, I think Apostle Paul was saying it, that if you are not given to be able to contain yourself to serve the Lord, then you should marry. You know, but he says that those who marry will first care about their partners. And that's the truth. So, I don't like to hear pastors, because they are working for God, they neglect their family or wives. I don't believe that's the way. We love God, yes. That's our number one. The next person is spouse. It's different from serving or working the work of ministry. My God relationship is personal with prayers and worship and praise that I do on my own and that takes first priority. What I do in the church or serve God and as a worker and all that is secondary and takes a lower position to my wife. Takes a lower position. So don't say you are serving God and you forget family and all that. Now, if you cannot contain yourself, and he's talking about men being lions. If a lion cannot contain himself, let him marry. Yes. Don't come and say yeah, you don't want to marry so that you can serve God. And you go about chasing all chickens. Hmm. Hmm. Can I marry someone who isn't spiritual but is a good man? Ah, I was single. one. I was one. Don't, don't, I was not don't spiritual. be tempted, though. I was not spiritual, and I keep saying it. When I saw my woman like this, I, it's my eyes, physical eyes that I use. I did not know God. I saw someone beautiful to behold, and I said, Ah! Oh, belele you. <laughs> and I said, this woman must not go away. I used the whole day in parallel motion watching her. If she goes this way, I will go this way. If she went that way, I will go that way. Watching her and beholding her beauty. And then I moved like a lion. I saw her in the morning, naming ceremony at 7 a.m. I moved at 5 p.m. Is that a lion? That was a poor lion. But that was the time I summoned courage to say hello. You know, love begins with one hello. It's a good song. Marriage that is like that till you die. Everything rosy sweet. Even the children can come in between you or the health challenge of a child. That's when you know somebody. You know, there is a man that got, you know, like that when one of the children had problem. He just changed. He became, you know, terrible to the wife because of that child. You know, so let us just be careful when we see these things. You like slender women. Uh, you marry slender uh, woman. But she will not be like that forever. Hmm? Yeah. My husband always eats and leaves the plates for me to come and pack after eating all the times. And he's always annoying. What do I do? <laughs> if the man is in this, you know, meeting today, he must have heard one or two things about my only circle. You know, he said, what he said is completely true. If I serve him food, he say, ah, you have made the food, you have served it. Let me be the one to wash and clean. We are joking about, okay, maybe I'll settle him. But you must have the art of a servant. How can you be the head of the home? And then it is you that say people are serving. What is the meaning of being a minister? It's a person that is serving. Not that everybody will be serving you. So if you are a man and you are still leaving plate for your wife and you don't have ourselves, 
you better change. That's the reason many people go abroad and they can't cope. There is no house there that will help you to pack your plate. In fact, nobody is going to serve you there. Praise the Lord. That is the very truth. You see that marriages that are managed here, this part of the world, can't survive abroad. They can't survive abroad. Because that man will watch that play too. He will pack. If he doesn't watch, somebody will call police for him. They will bundle him out. I'm telling you, a, a lot of us cannot, I, I don't want to go abroad because I can't survive. The woman get power abroad that here and let me enjoy my power here. But nothing, nothing is as beautiful as you leaving your power. That's what Jesus taught us. That's why he washed the feet of his disciples. He said, I have the power to take my life and decide that I will not die. But I laid it down and I died. So what is wrong in carrying the plate? We are not even talking about washing. And I think home training has a lot to do with that. You know, we women, we train up girls, do this, do that. And you are not teaching your boys. This is the wala they will create for the wife, for the, for, the, for the wives of the boys that they raise. So as you are raising your children, let them know that they are expected to do things right. Not that somebody else will be picking after them. Praise the Lord. Let me just share. When my, my, our children's cousins came visiting from London and they sat at the table and ate, and when our children were getting up, thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy. Carry their plate and all that. They were looking. And when they got up, it's like, must we also say thank you, Daddy? Thank you, Mommy. We demanded it. Say, thank yes. you. You have to say thank you. Thank you. That is how we'll be happy with you. Train them well. When they went back to London, they changed. And their parents called and said, What did we do to these children? The children that could never sweep and all that. They change. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you, Mommy. And that's her. So, it is good home training that when somebody serves you, that you reciprocate. Reciprocate. If it's packing place, not too much. How about washing pot? <laughs> how, do you, how do you handle a situation where a husband would never stand up for his wife? Once he gets to his family house, he just pretends like he doesn't know the wife and ignores her again it's part of what we're talking about bible says it ephesians 5 read 21 to 33 honor your wife as jesus christ honors the church you should honor your wife everywhere you go it's your glory so a lot of men that put their wives down or talk down their wives or when they get to family homes or family gathering and rubbish the woman you are rubbishing yourself. I can't stand it. I will not allow it for any of my brothers or family members to rubbish my wife. No way. They know me. So my wife, when you see my wife, you have seen me. What you do to me, do to my wife. If you do something wrong to my wife, I get up and fight for her. Go on. It's how you value her. Um, as a wife, is it everything your husband asked you not to do that you would obey and agree with? For example, him asking you not to work or do business that you feel would give you joy and make you happy, but just because he wants to be the head of the, um, of the home, he has refused. Hmm. I didn't work, but I was doing every opportunity. I was doing one business or the other to, you know, fulfill myself. But if you are a selfish man, you cannot tell your wife not to walk home because she has responsibility too. If you are not going to take care of her parents, take care of her own needs, then don't ask her not to work. This generation, that's the reason most girls are not marrying. Ask them. They will say they cannot be, you know, wives to peep men who will not let them have their own lives. So the thinking of the men African men, in this instance, must change. You must change. Allow your wives to express themselves. Let them express themselves. If they love you, they will not run away. If they love you, they will not, you know, miss the mark. As a matter of fact, it's going to help both of you to achieve more. That is what the Bible said. 
Praise the name of the Lord. Again, is a concept of oneness. When you see yourself as one with your wife, you will know that all the responsibilities she needs to carry, you are carrying, you are carrying it. it. She needs to give money to her parents or send food to them. It's your responsibility. Simple. They don't even need to know whether it's the husband doing it. And I am proud to say while her parents were alive, that is what we would do. You know, so what is so difficult? If you don't want her to work, then you must take 100% responsibility. You cannot shy away from it. No. I took that decision when, you know, we were, I was traveling. My nature of work was taking me outside of Lagos. And I said, ah, this thing won't work for us to take care of these children and train them properly. What do you think? You know, and all that. She had to leave her job. And I recognized that sacrifice up to today. So, I don't know why it's difficult to see somebody as part of you. It's part of you. If you have money, you should be willing to give your wife now. First. Why? Why would you think otherwise? God will help us. Amen. Amen. But permit me to just ask this, because from this question, this woman wants to work. She wants to work. She, yes, she wants to or do a business. Okay. She wants to be financially, and just like you have said, this new generation, mm -hmm. younger generation, yeah, she wants to do something, but yeah. he's resisting. So the question is, what... what, what the, the does man he should, have a plan? Does he have a plan The, the man her? should please allow the wife to express herself. I said it before. If she cannot do office work, that she goes this early and comes back late, let her have her own business. She can do something from home. And they do deliveries and things like that. But empower her to earn money. Please. That way, you will reduce the stress in the house. If a woman is not happy, the house can't be happy. So just learn that. Let her express herself. If you are creative, do creative things that will put money in your pocket. And the man should always be greasing her hand with money so that she will not be feeling that she's not working like yes, that. Praise the Lord. Is. Hallelujah. If a man's monthly earning cannot pay the family bills and the wife was just recently asked to resign from her job, what should the couple do? They have to find work again now. The man's got to work again. again. The man has to work again. You, you see, I, I had to uh, try to learn more about this generation. We of the older generation need to understand what they are going through. In this generation, women work. Women work. So first, you have to accept that fact that your woman will likely work because she wants, she's gone to school, she's had education, she's, she's also capable, she can do what you're doing, and then you say, don't work. That's like suppressing her. Yeah. So you have to understand and come to good understanding, you know, communication, and say, what can you do if we have to do this and that and that? And like, you know, Sugar said, you will find the right thing for her to do and express herself. You know, it is important that both of them are gainfully employed because of the bills of these days. The bills are higher than what we went through. Simple. How can you balance your finance as a couple, especially if the man is not interested in discussing finance and is not open about his earnings? These are the challenges of communication in marriage. You see, first of all, what you earn, everything about you ought to be naked to your wife. Nobody else. And the truth is, if your wife will plunder the resources you have, then you know her. And then it gives you challenge again to see how to make her see why you should invest or so or do this or that. But to hide what you are earning or to, I mean, we have a joint account. She has a personal account. I have a personal account. We put inflow into the joint account and solve our challenges from joint account. I cannot ask her how much is in your account. It's not my business. I will even give her money to her own personal account. That's what I will do. And I don't hide my own account. We don't need to hide now. Why do we need to why? Why? I just don't understand. We are Christians. If we are truly born again, which is the root of our challenge, 
if we are truly born again and you say this man or this woman is your life partner and you will be naked to each other for better for worse and all that if you finish the money then we look at ourselves koro koro for eyes simple that's the end now you plunder it i bring one million you plunder it hey what will happen tomorrow i say no money you have finished the money but I, I, our women are good and they are better savers than us and that's the truth they can plan better be open don't be afraid be open and she will help manage your finances thank you so the the men should know one thing that if they die today the person that would undo all this thing they were hiding is the woman so just pretend that you are dead and give her your account give her your book your pin number and everything and life will be easier praise the lord it is true hallelujah all right so we have spent um, a lot of time i can't believe it that is what but it's worth it i hope that we have learned i hope we have listened but if you still have more challenges some personal things you want to deal with um if you want pastor uh, tunde and uh, pastor bimbo to talk on it please kindly i will give you their contact and you can relate with him them personally you also still want the marriage counseling unit to intervene in your matter we have a marriage counseling unit in the church they can also speak to you personally praise the name of the lord Hallelujah. but by all intent and purposes all that we desire is that your marriage will be enjoyable and that your marriage will be fruitful Amen. in the name of Jesus. If you are still single and you want to get married, please carry the church along for proper counsel, for proper advice, so that you don't enter with the wrong footing or with the wrong expectations. And at the end of the day, you have a lot of problems or issues. That is not our prayer. So please carry the church along. Even going for the uh, traditional marriage or black bride prize and every carry the church along for proper advice for proper counseling and for proper prayers praise the name of the lord have i made myself very clear say amen to that so let's rise to our feet i want to ask my wife to join us as we pray together for all the homes for all the marriages pastor Tunde, please can you join us pastor Tunde, please can you pray um for all the homes all the marriages and um, every issues in homes. Hallelujah. God has designed that we should have Christian homes, wonderful homes, pleasurable homes, joyful homes. And so we want to pray for all of us who are married and those who are unmarried and single and praying and hoping to get married that God will bless our homes. Amen. Our homes will be true Christian homes Amen. where God is worshipped, where the word of God is taught, and where the parents agree together. Our homes will be sweet homes Amen. where we'll be dwelling together in peace in the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we thank you for every family represented here. Thank you for all couples. Thank you, Lord God Almighty, for the singles. Thank you, Father, Lord Jehovah, as we look up to you, Lord, to turn our marriages around. Father, we pray for marriages that have challenges, that you send healing into such marriages. In the name of Jesus. In every place where the man has fault or the woman has fault, Father, turn things around change your children in the name of jesus king of glory we ask that you visit every home visit every marriage and turn things around let all the weeping that's going on behind closed doors turn to joy in the name of jesus turn every morning into dancing in the name of jesus and if there are couples 
looking up to God for the blessing of the womb. Father, Lord Jehovah, let joy come quickly. Amen. Oh Lord, let that barren woman turn to be a joyful mother of children. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Jehovah, we thank you for marriages that are sweet and wonderful. Father, make it better. Amen. Make them better. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Father, we give you all praise and glory. That when next we see, Father Lord, we shall give testimonies of turnarounds in our marriages in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Father, we give you all praise. We want to pray especially for those that have physical challenges like impotency or lack of erection or cannot maintain erection. Father, King of glory, single your children out for this blessing. Let their miracle come in the name of Jesus. That men shall be true men in the name of Jesus. Jehovah, we thank you because with you, our God, nothing shall be impossible. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Praise the Lord. I will ask Sister Bimbo to also, Sister Bimbo, please, can you also pray as the Spirit leads? Just pray as the Spirit leads. Our Father and our God, we want to thank you yet again for your faithfulness. We ask this, morning, this afternoon that you give our women, all of us women here, the grace, the wisdom, the counsel, and the resources that we need to raise up seeds, godly seeds, for your kingdom. Make us to be good examples in our neighborhoods, in our community, in the church of God, and especially to our children. In the mighty name of Jesus, we shall be women of peace. We shall be virtuous women. We shall be women that you be proud of, O oh Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray, Lord, for our husbands, all that they need to be godly husbands, all that they need to, O oh Lord, be confident husbands. Grant unto them today, in the mighty name of Jesus, as it's Children's Day tomorrow, Father, we ask, O oh Lord, that you. O oh Lord, be with all our children. Cover them with the blood of Jesus. Set the wall of fire around about them. Anyone going through, O oh Lord, addiction or any other challenge, Father, please deliver them from them in Jesus' name. Let our joy be full each time we see or hear from them, Lord, in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Glory and honor be unto your name, O oh Lord. In Jesus' name we pray. Praise the name of the Lord. And Father, we thank you for your servants that you have used this morning to minister to us. Lord, even as virtue has left them this morning, let there be restoration. Use them mightily in the name of Jesus. Continue to use them. Bless their family. Bless the work of their hands in the name of Jesus. Thank you, mighty God. We give you praise and glory. For in Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. I like to say one word that every one of us, we all have issues. And I read in my scripture, which we have all read before, the woman with the issue of blood, she ran to Jesus. I want us to pray concerning when issues are with us. Because we question today shows that the body is sick. And we need help. Please don't let us be silent. It doesn't matter what is going on. Don't hide yourself. Present yourself before the church. Pre present yourself before the pastor. Stop hiding and saying, I don't want anybody to know. That woman, if she remain in that place, she will never be healed. Let us pray for that prayer quickly. That the much question we have shows that there's something in our midst. Can we pray about that quickly? Whatever may be your own issue, you need to run to the Lord. You need to run to the man of God. Run to God. Say you will not keep silent and you are hiding under that guide that you don't want people to know. I don't want it to be spread. The woman didn't care. She spread herself before the crowd and Jesus noticed that she came to touch him. Can we pray that for the church of God, every one of us questions have been raised. Let's pray that all those questions that beyond what has been said this afternoon, that the Lord will bring testimony 
me and they'll be turned around concerning all that has come today and in the name that is above every other name the Lord will set every one of us free in the name of Jesus we will not hide all that trouble us we will cast them before him and as we cast all before him the Lord in heaven will honor and hear us in the name of Jesus for in Jesus mighty name we pray Amen. let's not fail to pray for one another as we wear different gowns we all have issues ensure you speak to someone don't hide yourself and as you do so healing is your portion in Jesus name Amen and please don't go and commit suicide because of marital issues don't it's not acceptable and God will continue to bless you in Jesus name Father we thank you in the name of Jesus as we leave this place Lord we are not departing from your presence let your presence go ahead of us make all the crooked places straight level every mountain god in sunder every gate of brass and iron in the name of jesus this new week oh god grant us miracles grant us favors in the name of jesus let your favor locate every one of us in the name of jesus we shall not die we shall live to declare your works we shall not bury any of our children we shall not mourn over any one of us in the name of jesus christ he says say you to the righteous it shall be well with him it is well with you it is well with your household it is well with the work of your hands in the name of jesus christ and each time we hear about you and your family let it be wonderful testimonies of the love of god and of the goodness of jehovah so shall it be in the name of jesus and the church will say louder amen please if you walked in after we have collected our offering can they drop your offering at the usher's desk before you leave shall we share the grace of fellowship may the grace of our lord jesus christ the love of god and the sweet fellowship of the holy spirit be with us now and forevermore amen surely god's goodness and mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives we shall dwell in the house of the lord forever and ever amen if you are still alive shout a louder amen amen thank you sir thank you